in this video, I'm going to share with you what the diaphragm is, how it works, and how you can optimize the use of it in order to improve your voice. Now, when was the last time you watched what happens to a runner at the end of their run? I mean, after the cameras are switched off, what they actually do. And when is the last time you noticed what you do after you've been for a run or done some kind of cardiovascular exercise? Well, I've got a theory. In the past, I've made videos on breathing and what the diaphragm um, might, might do, but now I really wanna go a bit further and test what's optimum, what's the best way we can use our diaphragm. And now, to start this experiment, to start this test, I'm going to make myself out of breath because I want you to see what happens to me, like, an, a, like a runner when they finish running, what your body naturally does. And we're gonna talk about that in the studio. I'm gonna to sprint to the end of here and back again, and hopefully if I go fast and hard enough, I'm gonna be out of breath. So, let's do it. You ready? Now, let's start by looking at the end again. Notice how as I slow to the end, I raise my chest up and immediately roll forward. This is common, especially when people are worn out. So, I looked into a few runners' websites to see if they could offer any reasons for this phenomenon, and I found a really interesting article in runnersworld.com that discusses this posture and how for ages sports coaches all around the world made students stand with their hands behind their heads in an upright position like this. The article discusses the studies of Rondal King, an exercise physiologist at NYU Langone Sports Performance Center. He says, when your hands are on your head and you're standing straight up, the back of your body is rigid, which puts your lungs in a hyperinflated state. Your lungs are like balloons. It's like trying to fill a balloon that already has air with more air. You can't get that oxygen exchange if your body is already filled with air. Conversely, when you rest your hands on your knees, your body is in a better position for your diaphragm to function. The muscles around your mediastinum, which houses the organs including your heart and lungs, arteries, veins and nerves in your chest, are more relaxed, which leads to a more efficient exchange of oxygen so that your body can breathe easier. And just looking at myself now in the recording, what's interesting is to me that despite this movement actually closing off the front of the body and seemingly giving you less space to breathe, it allows gravity to assist in relaxing your belly. Also, the support of your hands gives your body permission to release the abdominal muscles, which further creates space for your belly to relax, and therefore get out of the way of the movement of breath. According to Rondell King, because the function of your diaphragm muscle is tied to your nervous system, which controls most of what your body does, like breathing and how you respond to an emergency, putting your hands on your knees can take your body out of its fight or flight response and slow your breathing down. But something else is happening. Something that to be better able to understand as well as use, we can experience it by trying this out. Just take your hands, turn them inwards like that so the elbows go out and the thumbs are facing upwards. And just lean on yourself, just relax a little bit and see what happens. Let go of your belly and just breathe there. Remember that the, 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 the diaphragm is connected to your ribs all the way around. Just, just keep that in mind. And everything underneath it, you've got a lot of vital organs just beneath there and so if they're able to move freely and, and kind of swish about, if you like, and it, it makes the job easier for the diaphragm, therefore it can be more free to move. Of course, we ideally want to have this ease of effort in our normal standing position, but it can become difficult, and tensions arise from undesirable postural habits, but that's a video for another time. So I went into my resources and found a book written by Nancy Z, who is an internationally known classical singer and voice teacher. Born in America and raised in China, Nancy weaves together the best of ancient Eastern disciplines with modern Western techniques, and she has dedicated a whole book to the pursuit of better breathing techniques that aim to improve our daily lifestyle, as well as our speech, singing, and athletics. 
Whilst going through this book, I was reminded of um, an exercise which is designed for stretching the lower back muscles. And I thought it might be useful and, and actually play a part and give you something that you can actually use for yourself to, to test this out and see how it feels. And I'm going to read the instructions directly from the book. Sit up straight in a chair with your feet on the floor 10 to 12 inches apart. Place your hands in your lap, palms downward. Turn your palms inward with your thumbs towards your body, allowing the elbows to turn outward and forward. Gently grasp your upper thighs with your thumbs on the outside and your fingers on the inside of your thighs. Bend forward gradually while sliding your hands down your legs towards your ankles. Firmly grasp the ankles or the legs as close to the ankles as comfortably possible. Bend your head downward towards the floor and turn your elbows further out. In this position, focus your attention on the lower back and tailbone. With your head still down, place the tip of your tongue behind your bottom front teeth. Exhale through your mouth by blowing gently through slightly pursed lips to a slow count of one, two, three, four. And at the same time, gradually deflate the lower abdominal wall. Hold your breath and remain still for a moment. Place the tip of your tongue against the back of your top front teeth. Inhale through your nose, creating a yawning sensation at the back of the nose and throat to a slow count of one, two, three, four, five. Direct the air you're inhaling toward the base of your torso. Imagine elongating the spine as you inhale while inflating the lower back torso. On the fifth count, give both sides of the lower back torso an extra expansion outward with an emphatic intake of breath. Hold your breath as you slowly sit up, sliding your hand back onto your lap. Exhale completely. You can repeat all these seven steps four times round. And when you do come up eventually, before you get to your feet, just give yourself a moment to pause and make sure that you're not feeling dizzy or lightheaded before you do stand up and go about your day. To utilize this well is to, in a sense, get out of its way and to kind of release any tensions that are in the way of, of the natural flow of air. And once you discover this ease of effort with your breathing, you can start to connect with your words a lot more precisely as well as with other people. And you'll have a more clear, more resonant and just a more adaptable and expressive voice on the whole. Remember, less is more and your breath should just come and go freely, almost like the tide coming and going. And all you're gonna do is surf the waves of words and connect with your audience. It's a nice imagery um, to kind of consider that the air is circular and it comes and goes like a tide. It doesn't stop, it never once gets held or broken, it just continually moves, even if it's in different directions. So if you wanna develop your diaphragmic muscle a little bit more and understand it deeper, as well as finding a tool that can help you stay more grounded and relaxed, this video here has an exercise in it, which I'm sure will be of use. So thank you so much for watching. If you believe that someone out there could use the information that's in this video, why not share it with them? It also helps me out if you like, and if you really wanna learn more, and. and and follow along subscribe and that way we can you can join the community leave a message i'd love to know your thoughts on this video on other videos that you might have come across and if you've got any ideas or questions about this or any of the other videos on the channel just just hit me up and that's fine i'm sure to get back to you very soon um i'd also say that if you'd like to support this channel in any other ways you can also buy me a coffee i say buy me a coffee but what you're actually doing is buying me books and i'm spending any money i get on books so i can get more information so i can learn more so i can share that information back with you and of course if you want to go deeper and further with your own education and with your own voice improvement then i'd say that my flagship course the eight week online improve your voice is still available and it's it, it's still creating remarkable results in people all over the world but anyway thank you so much for watching my name is darren mcstay this is improve your voice and until the next time look after your voice